Oh, oh, yeah, it's on. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be standing or seated, uh, but please forgive me for standing. I think I will sound much more better <laughs> than seated. Uh, it is a very great privilege and honor for me to be standing here before you at this COP26 site event of IDFC. This is a club of very prestigious public development banks, both national and, and regional development banks. We are the institutions that are under heavy load as we are busy talking about the SDG goals as well as the Paris mm. Agreement alignment. This is the task <clears throat> that we really have taken upon ourselves as the IDFC. And by the way, 2021 is also our 10 year anniversary as IDFC. We are an institution of 26 public development banks struggling across Asia, Europe, Americas, and Africa. We are a club of like-minded institutions. And as IDFC, we've been working together to try and chart a collective way forward because we understand the SDG 17 of Global Coalition that it says from across the world, we have to look at how best we can partner to be able to successfully make sure that no one is left behind by 2030. And also to be able to make sure that the Paris Agreement of 2015 is achieved. We are an institution that are fully behind the 2050 net zero emission goals. We are, a, we are actually a club of about, that has got the asset base of about 4 trillion US dollars. And since 2015, as a club, we have made commitments to green finance of about 1 trillion US dollars. And in actual fact, this is a huge achievement because we had thought that this is the target that we could achieve by 2025. But what does this all mean? I'm happy that today we have Dr. Barbara Buchner here with us, who's going to ask us very difficult questions <laughs> in terms of how are we making sure that these commitments are translated into systemic, systemic change? How are we going to make sure that because we have achieved these commitments so early, way before 2025, we then keep on ramping up our ambition as, the, as the IDFC members? Because this is what we're all about. I know that uh, 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 Dr. Buchner is also spearheading the, 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 the sustainable finance integrity, the framework for sustainable finance integrity. And this is uh, CPI's work or, or, or climate policy initiative, working together with the European Climate Foundation, as well as the Oxford Sustainable uh, uh, Finance Unit. We are really looking at how do we make sure that there are standards and benchmarks that public development finance institutions as well as the actors in the financial ecosystem are able to make sure that we achieve something that is going to be measurable and something that is going to be achievable but something that's going to bring about meaningful change this is about people this is about nature because as we are talking about this net zero emission by 2050 as the world, it says, what then do we do starting now? And how do we make sure that by that period, our systems and our portfolio are talking to that? But as IDFC, 20% of annual commitments are now into green finance, which is a huge achievement of itself. I know that by 2020 alone, we are talking about 185 billion US dollars commitment into, into green climate. But again, it says there's about 27 billion that has been committed for the first time to, to, to biodiversity. And again, this is one area because nature and people cannot be mutually exclusive. 
if we want to see a sustainable world, we have to make sure that at the core of our decision, at the core of our actions, peoples as well as nature are driven in tandem and driven quite boldly. And I'm standing here today, I'm very excited that this morning my South African government announced the international partnerships with the governments of UK, the governments of France, the government of the Republic of Germany, the government of, I mean, of the European Union, and they are pledging to put together 8.5 billion US dollars to help South Africa to transition towards a, a just and a sustainable future. As you all know that as a country, we have 95% of our generation, power generation coming from coal. These countries are saying, South Africa, we're willing to help you, but we want to see you embarking on a very credible and very ambiguously clear transition. These are saying we want to make sure that because we are also one of the greatest emitters, we have to make sure that we begin to leave the Paris Agreement. But ladies and gentlemen, let me also say Dr. Buchner is going to be taking you through with the panel of esteemed IDFC members about how are we going to make sure that we are embarking on a journey that is going to bring about meaningful and dignified lives for our people. But again, our chairman here, uh, Mr. Remiru, my friend, who is the chairman of IDFC and the president of the a AFD of France, is also going to talk to us and deliver a keynote address to all of us here and, and lay the way forward for the club and how we want to really work together as a coalition of like-minded uh, uh, public development institutions. And really I'm excited and I'm looking forward to listening to this engagement as well as Remy Rue's uh, 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 keynote address. Thank you very much, my chairman. I now hand over to you. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. No, can you? Okay. So my ladies. So you see, uh, it's impossible to uh, to compete with Patrick. <laughs> how eloquent and friendly he is, so I will remain seated. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, well, you, everybody understood that uh, he made the keynote speech. <laughs> and you know um, what IDFC uh, is about. So maybe uh, I, I could uh, share with you on a more personal note uh, what uh, IDFC means to me and uh, how special it is, I think, for this uh, setting and uh, what we are, thanks Javier for being here, uh, with the Green Climate Fund, with all partners doing here uh, um, at, uh, at COP. I remember back in uh, 2016 when I was uh, fresh and young and uh, <laughs> appointed uh, as the CEO of, uh, of AFD, uh, I had already, already an idea of uh, the role of public banks. Uh, I was in the government at that time and I was pushing for merging uh, AFD, Caisse des Dépôts et Consignation, I mean, uh, linking, uh, because it was at the time of uh, SDGs, uh, uh, linking uh, national and international and um, going as far as possible in uh, our own constituency uh, to have um, climate, um, inequalities, I mean, all the, the international priorities that were set at that time uh, reach uh, our territories, our population. Uh, and I remember then uh, I went to Frankfurt. Uh, I met with uh, late uh, Dr. Schroeder. He was, uh, this, well, many of you uh, remember uh, Ulrich Schroeder. He was then uh, the CEO of KFW. Uh, and the chair of the IDFC. Then I turned to uh, Patrick, <laughs> um, who, was, who is also one of the, the founding fathers of uh, our club. And uh, from my French experience, they explained me uh, 
other experiences, that of, uh, of the reconstruction of Germany, uh, that of the transition uh, of Germany. And Patrick also explained to me, um, uh, yes, uh, what is happening in South Africa, what is accelerating uh, right now, today, uh, in South Africa, this huge transformation of your uh, fabric, I mean, and with the, the, the incredible challenges of uh, reconverting, training, um, um, transitioning from coal uh, to renewable, uh, um, um, reconciling, uh, of course. Uh, um, and both of them, they explain me, of course, what public development banks can do. Uh, because they are, um, uh, we are political appointees, of course. We are so close to our governments. Uh, I was with President Macron yesterday, all day long. Uh, you were with your ministers here for the announcement. Um, but at the same time, we are heading uh, financial institutions, meaning uh, institutions that have their own movement, their own balance sheet, their own uh, contribution and that have this uh, very unique capacity to uh, liaise uh, with all uh, other actors uh, in our society. I mean, Javier knows uh, heading Bank Oldex, uh, what it means for all SMEs in Colombia. Uh, uh, Patrick knows what it means for energy, for urban planning, for transportation to add uh, to add the um, uh, DBSA. And so there's, uh, there's something very special uh, in our institution and there's something very special in the club we formed back in uh, 2011 for 10 years. Uh, now we will celebrate our anniversary uh, on uh, Thursday. You, of course, all are most welcome uh, at, at that time. And I think you built I'm trying to pursue for five years now as your chair, I think a very unique uh, institution. Um, I would say that uh, is able to combine uh, um, in, a, in quite a unique way, a voice uh, and services. I mean, uh, and we certainly have to keep uh, somehow the, the, the right balance between uh, these two uh, capacities. Voice, uh, of course, uh, for the reasons explained by, uh, by Patrick. Uh, IDFC uh, succeeded, I think, in, in uh, uh, explaining what uh, national, uh, sub-regional, regional public banks can provide. Uh, of course, as part of uh, global financial governance, uh, linked with multilateral players, supporting multilateralism, but also mobilizing their own uh, co constituency. And I think this, uh, this role uh, uh, is more and more perceived. Uh, well, this pavilion in itself is a proof of that. We were not there 10 years ago, five years ago. And your presence uh, this afternoon uh, is key for us. Um, and um, we certainly uh, will do more. And the second dimension is uh, services, services to our members. This is a, DBSA is particularly attentive uh, to, uh, uh, to know, to track all the, the relationships that are building uh, between, there's a working group on that, uh, on cooperation between uh, all of us. You are heading, Patrick, with uh, DBSA uh, colleagues. And I think climate is, of course, the, the, what we achieved the best uh, uh, because we succeeded in um, developing uh, uh, common positions, common methodologies. Uh, on uh, Barbara was there back in 2015 with MDBs where we, we defined what uh, mitigation finance is about, and you're tracking it <laughs> from then. Uh, and now we are in the process of uh, trying to define what uh, alignment means. Alignment with the Paris Agreement. This is something we begin to be clear about. And alignment with the SDGs, which is and remain uh, 
a mystery, but we're working hard to define it, not, not for ourselves, of course, but building on the, on the, the experiences of, uh, of all of us. We succeeded also in mobilizing way more climate finance, way more uh, 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 climate uh, projects. Uh, we have reached the one trillion mark from 2015 uh, to 2020 as a, as a club. We started, uh, I think, uh, less than 100 billion, 1890, and we doubled. We multiplied uh, five-fold adaptation finance within the club. Uh, and uh, we are doing the same now, starting from this year, measuring uh, uh, biodiversity finance and linking uh, climate finance uh, with uh, biodiversity finance. And I close by saying that on climate, we also um, built this uh, climate facility. The Green Climate Fund uh, helped us tremendously with the, the countries uh, uh, that accepted uh, to uh, share uh, with the club uh, resources and, uh, deployed by the Green Climate Fund. Um, um, uh, and um, uh, this uh, initiative, and I, and I really want to thank uh, Refik, Joseph, uh, Mustafa, uh, Nomsa, Antonio, before all those that are building this tool for the, for, for the first time uh, that will help uh, uh, strengthen our mandates, uh, better our procedures, train uh, our staff uh, for climate and probably beyond uh, at the time. Uh, uh, because we are on this journey from uh, climate uh, to um, uh, SDG. So this is uh, maybe the second dimension uh, uh, services that I wanted to, uh, to, to stress. Um, I close by saying that um, we have to keep that ambition, we have to keep that uh, concreteness, uh, and we have to keep that uh, uh, capacity to take position on the global, uh, uh, on the global stage. Uh, uh, of course, our uh, first duty is to aid our own institution. Uh, and we are all of us uh, in such a deep uh, uh, crisis uh, uh, that um, uh, it's difficult to uh, spare time for international cooperation. And so I thank uh, CEOs uh, that will uh, participate, that will attend uh, the annual assembly on Thursday. Uh, because I know how challenging, I mean, AFD is a, is, is a pure international player, so that's, that's an easy one for me. It's very different for you, Patrick, for you, Javier, uh, to, but you're there and you're doing it. Uh, and that's uh, particularly important uh, uh, to, to have you here. And of course, we have our own institution to uh, lead. And we also have the finance in common scene now, which is the which is the, 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 the big picture with multilaterals, with uh, all 530 public development banks. Javier was with us in Rome two weeks ago, and he, 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 he understood the, also the, the power of it. If we succeed in building this now very vast global infrastructure of public investments that is so much needed for climate and for, and for SDGs. So, between uh, our individual duties, between the big scene, we have to keep the club uh, united, uh, active, uh, concrete, voiceful. Uh, and if so, uh, I think it will help us <laughs> in our institution, of course, reinforcing us in our own constituency, because we have an international hook uh, somewhere, but also contributing uh, very, very actively to the discussion on uh, global uh, finance uh, that is so active right now uh, because with SDR, with all the discussion uh, uh, ongoing uh, at the IMF, uh, at the World Bank, uh, um, in, uh, in, uh, in Glasgow. So I stop here. Uh, last word to thank, of course, the Secretariat. Uh, Ale uh, Alexis Bonnel was my Sherpa initially, then Beryl uh, Boutet is here, Sabrina is here, many colleagues. Uh, uh, they are the heart and soul uh, of the club, of course, taking care of uh, all the meetings, all the, the hard work uh, that we are doing together. And I want to warmly uh, thank them uh, and you all, of course, with all the Sherpas and all their colleagues in uh, each and a, 
every uh, of the 26 members of IDFC, uh, you are doing a, a fantastic job, but it's, it's your role to keep the flame and to keep this very unique nature of IDFC. Thanks a lot. Thanks so much. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, uh, Patrick and Remy, I think, for a very inspiring kind of setting the scene and really showing what the club has achieved uh, over the last 10 years. So I'm very excited to now okay, move into the next uh, phase of, the, of this event. My name is Barbara Buchner. I'm the Global Managing Director of Climate mm. Policy Initiatives. Mm. Thank you so much, mm. Patrick, for calling out many of our um, products and initiatives. I swear I have, did not pay him, but um, <laughs> I might kind of you know, see you later. Uh, but it was uh, really nice just to hear really what the club has done in terms of the, the voice and the services, but also really where the club needs to head. And I think Patrick, you have very nicely outlined, you know, we've achieved a lot, you have achieved a lot, and I'd love to hear both from um, the panelists here live with me, but also the panelists that we have uh, virtually joining us. A little bit more on, uh, and there's a lot of interest in the work that, that <laughs> the IDFC is doing. Uh, just to hear a little bit more of the details on some of the examples, and then also the partners. How can we actually expand the partnership mm -hmm. that uh, we've already heard now, I think, is the, the, the heart and is keeping the flame of the ambition high here. So uh, just in terms of um, a little bit setting the scene, before I come to our panel. I think I want to just uh, come back a little bit to you know where we need to go. Uh, we've heard the one trillion commitment um, uh, threshold that has been achieved, which I think is fantastic. My organization, uh, CPI, we are also tracking global uh, public and private investments. Um, and we've just released our latest flagship report uh, that shows really overarching how many, you know, how much money is going into this context. And we have um, some good news. It's uh, an all-time high. We are over uh, a, a 630 billion US dollars of global public and private domestic and international flows, which is good, steady increases. But we also know that we are still falling far short of the trillions that are needed in order of getting us towards the, the future that uh, I think Patrick has outlined before. And we also are a little concerned because the growth rate has slowed down and we don't even see yet the impact of the COVID pandemic on that. So there is, uh, I think we are very excited about the, the one trillion threshold. We're very excited about the continuous commitment and the more than 20% of uh, new commitments uh, from the IDFC towards green finance, but it's really about thinking about, you know, how, what can we do more? How can we translate all the changes that you have all done in your institutions in order to really make the systemic uh, changes that Patrick was talking about? So just very briefly, um, uh, let me introduce my panel and let me start here. Um, with my life partners. So I'm very happy to have here Javier Madazares, who is the Deputy Executive Director of the Green Climate Fund. Wonderful to have you here. Javier, I have another Javier on my other side here. This is Javier Diaz <laughs> Fajardo, is the CEO of a bank called Dex. It's great to have you here with us. Thank you. Then I'm very pleased to welcome here, um, uh, virtually joining us, uh, Gustavo Montesano, who is the President of Pendesa, the Brazilian Development Bank, uh, who is joining us uh, from Brazil. Uh, wonderful to have you. I'm not exactly sure where I'm looking, but I'm going to see you very soon on the screen, I know that. And uh, it's my real pleasure also to having with us uh, Christiane Leibach, uh, who is the board member of KFW, who is also joining us uh, virtually today. And I'd like to get started with a, a quick round uh, and hearing from each of our panelists, you know, a little bit more about the examples, you know, what, what do you consider as the key strength? And again, both as part of the club, but also as a, a, a very strong partner, the GCF. And so, uh, but let me start uh, first giving the, the floor to, to our uh, virtual participants. And I'd love to get started with Christiana and uh, we'll then move on. So Christiana, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Barbara. And mm -hmm. hello to everybody and good afternoon to Glasgow here from, from Frankfurt in Germany. Yeah, I'm very pleased to join you on this uh, occasion and this session and thanks for all the people that made it happen and organize it. Yeah, when I look at IDFC uh, over the last couple of years in particular, when, it, uh, when we're talking about climate, when we're talking about biodiversity, when we're talking about sustainability, I think I'm very, very pleased the progress we have made and uh, what we can add as the strengths of the of the club. And I think um, thinking about it, what it made it all happen is that we really benefit from the 
great, uh, great member institutions. And I think it's a very special club in the sense that we have um, development banks uh, around the globe from the more uh, as we from Europe, from the Americas, but in particular from the countries in Africa, Asia and Latin America, because it's not about wanting to be global, but it is about bringing different perspectives into the on the scene and for our projects. And I think that's something I feel always we benefit about. We benefit from a lot because uh, it is about fi uh, bringing up more financing volume. That is obviously very, very important. But it is as well very important really to have a good quality in the projects we deliver so that we really achieve in terms of the impact we want to achieve on climate and sustainability what we what we are planning for and i think that need uh, different partners with a different background from different regions with know-how and expertise and it needs i think uh, in addition to financing it needs a lot of know-how and expertise when it comes to all the joint to all the tools and methodology uh, that centers around climate and uh, i think there again the club can provide a whole lot of benefits in the sense that um, yeah we can uh, we can deliver better products and better projects to, to our partners because we talk in the same language we are using the same methodologies and we are using the same standards and that is very helpful because when you look from a perspective of our partner and client, what counts for is that he knows what the framework is and what he can achieve and that we're talking the same language. So I think the combination of different perspectives because of different institutions and really to working further hard on um, on methodologies and on um, on joint tools is really very, very important. And that's something we particular enjoy and benefit from and really think that this is one major thing to make it very successful in developing projects which benefit climate and sustainability. Fantastic, thank you so much, Christian. And I think some, some excellent points here, certainly this diversity in perspective that really allows us to, to better understand what is needed and go beyond kind of the niche thinking and siloed thinking, uh, what very often happens in the context of climate finance. So thank you so much for that. And the, the common language, I couldn't agree more again. I think continuing to improve the understanding of climate finance and continuing to improve methodologies going beyond climate also towards biodiversity and other areas, I think, and understanding what Paris alignment means uh, in, in, uh, in order to operationalize it in, in the country is, I think, extremely important. But uh, let me uh, continue and go to Gustavo, uh, who is um, uh, joining us from, uh, from Bendesa, and I uh, hear your thoughts on what are the, the real strengths uh, of the IDFC club. Hey, thank you. Thank you, Barbara, for the introduction. And uh, my virtual welcome to, to everyone that's participating on this debate and uh, willing to be there next month in, in person so we can shake hands and discuss in, in, on presence. And uh, regarding the, 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 the topics of uh, the benefits of being a member of IDFC, when it relates to climate. I will try not to be repetitive of, of what uh, Christiane just said, but I think, I think we have a very common view. And uh, we listed two topics here, two, two characteristics of the club. The first one is the diversity of its member that, that, that was deeply uh, discussed by, by Christiane. And the second one uh, is the focus of the club into SDGs achievements and the, the Paris Agreement uh, implementation, right? And going to the to the first one, which is me, which means uh, di diversity. We, in our perspective, being a, a national development bank, so very very Brazilian centric, having a club where we can understand uh, views and challenges and, and, and tools from around the world, uh, it's critical, right? And uh, a good example that I like to mention when we'd, we've been debating climate is uh, our focus and our needed, I would say, as, as, as a Brazilian bank, to consider the just transition when we speak about climate. Uh, being a, an emerging market uh, uh, region, uh, of course, we, are, we all focus on, on the climate, we're all focused on the transitions, but uh, uh, we, we don't have any other option other than it be just. Otherwise, the social mm -hmm. cost of this can be, I would say, more damaged than, than the final benefits for our population. When it goes to the focus of the club into SDGs achievement and uh, and, uh, and the Paris Agreement implementation, uh, we, we see that we are a tool of our government and our society in order, in order to reach the, the, the goals. 
And uh, uh, just remember, just remind you what our uh, Minister of Environment just announced uh, two days ago, where uh, we formally committed uh, with our net zero by 2050. It was has, has been already disclosed, but now it's formally uh, committed. And the, the, the second good news is that Brazil also increased its ambition toward reducing, reducing emissions. Uh, before it was 43% in 2030, and now we're officially committing to 50% in 2030. And uh, we as a country are also being more ambitious on, on reducing illegal deforestation uh, from 2030 to 2028. So as you can see, uh, we as a country, we're taking ambition steps into the climate transition and having a bank such as BNDS supporting the, 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 the government and the society and aligned with IDFC is a milestone, is critical for, for, for the government, for, the, for Brazil, to have uh, security and insurance that uh, we, we, can, we can do that. And uh, examples of this, the work that the club has been doing so, so, so before on uh, 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 taxonomy on the SDGs, on methodology, it was critical for us, critical for the NDS to be able that in 2020, uh, we, 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 we d d d deployed a digital platform where all our loans are now linked to the, to the, to the SDGs. So that, that's a, a consequence of the job and the work that we benefit by, by participating on the SDG, on the, on the IDFC, sorry. And more recently, uh, we're happy to announce and we'll be announcing uh, during the, the, the COP uh, officially our digital platform as well, where we are going to, to show full transparency of all our, our low ones when it relates to climate change. So uh, based on the work that has been done through, through IDFC, we're able now to disclosure all climate impact on the, on the landing that we did from 2015 to 2021 on energy, urban mobility, and forests. And uh, we're happy to conclude that only considering those three sectors, uh, taking those the projects that we financed on this on this window, uh, the, the CO2 equivalent that were uh, reduced from, from, from the biosphere is equivalent to 19 years of cars in Sao Paulo. And again, we're just able to move fast and forward because we've been discussing and learning from our IDFC colleagues uh, for a long, long, long time. So we're, we're happy to announce that the platform does the, during the next days, everyone can be reaching there. And I'm sure that my IDFC colleagues will be, will be happy to share that uh, each one of you is a part of this uh, uh, tool that permitted BNDS and we supported our country on being more ambitious and being more transparent on, on disclosing the, the activity. So very good news to share and assure that to being together for more 10 years, will be, it can be even more and more ambitious as a group. Thank you so much. Clear, a clear kind of signal also from Gustavo that the IDFC is a kind of accelerated to action in your own institution. So, and really not only on the actual investments, but also really becoming more transparent and, and being better in supporting your government, which I think is extremely important. Mm -hmm. But Javier, mm -hmm. let me uh, move to you and, and like get your views on what mm -hmm. you feel has been really kind of the most you know, successful parts of, of the IDFC. Thank you, Barbara. Let me also start by thanking Remy and all colleagues here who have invited us. Wonderful opportunity to be here and, and share our own experiences. So I would just like to add on top of what my colleagues have said that the mandate of each development bank is probably different. So in our case, we focus on SMEs, other public banks focus on infrastructure and so on. So part of the virtue of the club is aligning ourselves understanding the mandate of each other, understanding what we need to do, how we go about our own business, and then the, uh, the strength of knowing what other people do actually makes us much better in transforming our own institutions. So to me, that would be the first and probably the strongest virtue of the club, which is bringing together 26 institutions at this point, hopefully it'll be much more in the future. But as of now, understanding and working together with common principles with mapping is extremely important for our own work inside our own institutions. So that would be my first example. Second would be, uh, speaking of Bancoldex, we issued green bonds uh, four years ago. And I have to say, we would not have been able to do so had we not had the assistance of KFW, of Nafin, and other colleagues in the process. 
So for a mid-sized bank like ourselves, having access to other colleagues and to other institutions is extremely important, and we achieve things through this cooperation. Even as you walk around this wonderful pavilion, you realize that there are, there are different and diverse initiatives. So bringing them together is what the IDFC probably does best. Uh, we also have a cooperation with the institution Mr. Javier Manzanares runs. So I could go on and on about collaboration. My colleagues have already done that. But I will go back to my initial point, which is the mandate. How we go about our business is extremely important in terms of knowing what others do. The old saying of uh, act local, think global really applies to this scenario. Because the day-to-day -day of our institutions goes by and we pretty much devote ourselves to acting locally, but we need to think global. And IDFC takes us into that mindset. It takes us across borders, and it allows us to work with colleagues from across the globe. So we're very fortunate, uh, and we're actually very excited about working with uh, other colleagues in the IDFC. This, this is just one example. Finance in common is another example. So to me, the, the main virtue is putting us in a different mindset, a very important mindset, and achieving more through the strength of our partners. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Javier. I think act global, local and think global, but really doing it and like, and again, uh, in a way, kind of accelerating the action that you otherwise would have done by kind of learning from yes. this global mindset, but really learning from others and, and replicating or like, you know, getting quicker up to speed with certain tools or like instruments is certainly one yeah. of the virtues of, of the club. So thanks so much. Well, mm -hmm. Javier, over to you now again, like very clearly a, a trusted partner of the IDFC. And so I'd love to get your views as well of what you have seen a little bit from the outside uh, uh, as the strength of, of this club. Uh, thank you, uh, Barbara, and uh, many thanks to IDFC for, uh, for the invitation. A privilege to, uh, to be here. Uh, happy anniversary on your 10 years. Uh, congratulations for your great job. Uh, Patrick and Remy that have been leading all of this effort. Um, I'm, I'm going to choose three areas on, on those three examples. Uh, the first one, uh, the high potential of IDFC for uh, knowledge uh, sharing, in line with what Javier was saying. A uh, second area is uh, a programmatic approach. Okay. Uh, a third one being um, the standardization of uh, frameworks. An example about the <coughs> a high potential for knowledge sharing. I can think of, uh, for instance, in the process of accreditation to the GCF or re-accreditation to the GCF, uh, we are asking entities to, uh, to use a baseline methodology uh, for GHG calculation. Uh, that example on knowledge sharing of maybe best practices that some of the members of IDFC that could share with other members, I would probably be a, a fairly uh, uh, fairly useful. Uh, on a second one, programmatic approach. Uh, it was mentioned by Remy earlier on. Uh, we are uh, at this point we are working with IDFC uh, Club on a on a programmatic approach within our readiness program. Uh, that's a grant-based program, and uh, and it's uh, on the climate facility. Uh, so we are providing support along with uh, IDFC to a number of national development banks uh, with the purpose of embedding uh, in a mainstreaming uh, climate uh, criteria into their decision process. And the, first two, the third one, when I talk about uh, in, uh, integrating or uh, utilizing the standards, I was thinking about the, uh, the standards like uh, ESG that uh, also some of you members of IDFC, they have, you have already done a, a very good job. You have already chosen some standards. Maybe that's something that can be also shared with other members. And, uh, and a few words about the GCF for those who are not uh, very familiar. So the Green Climate Fund uh, uh, deploys financial support through entities that get accredited with the, with the GCF. So we have approximately 112 entities accredited. Wow. And the number is relevant because <coughs> out of those 112 entities, 36 are national development banks. Oh. 
And out of those 36, 13 are IDFC members. Uh, so you, you can understand how important IDFC is for us. Uh, we work very much in tandem. We're very happy of that. The, the, the growth and velocity that IDFC is really incorporating climate finance in the carbonizing portfolios and the national development banks, we very much welcome uh, so. And uh, so in, in terms of, uh, of our uh, four-prong uh, approach, what is important uh, for, for the GCF uh, is to uh, promote and enable uh, the environment for climate action. Uh, it's to uh, accelerate uh, climate finance through innovation, uh, mobilize finance at scale, and also as a fourth one, uh, ensuring that there is an alignment with sustainable development goals. So that we're, we're all talking about pretty much uh, the same thing. Uh, the important part is that national development banks have the the capacity to scale up. Mm -hmm. And that's where the GCF wants to support national development banks. Uh, we, want to, uh, we want to support you in all your financial structuring where the GCF can de-risk part of your, uh, of your transactions, where, where you, can, you can truly deploy your funding uh, to the rest of, uh, of banks within your regions or countries in a manner that the message of uh, embedding climate finance is part of it. And that's what the, what objective is. That's what we're very uh, proud to work with IDFC and National Development Banks. Over to you, Barbara. Thank you so much, Javier. And uh, again, I think it's so important to have a partner like the GCF to really enable you even to do more, really take off some of the risks that you're not yet able to take on, but also kind of to, to really complement and help grow some of the, the public development banks um, around the world. And again, in, in our work, we see that the importance of public development banks, and I think there's so much potential. And as we need to go to the trillions again, I think we need to see how we can get there. So you've already outlined a little bit um, some of the areas I want to go into with my second round of, of panel discussion here, really, you know, what next? How can we get, you know, from where we are? And again, a trillion. Again, congratulations on, on that threshold, but how can we get to the trillions? You know, Patrick, you said, you know, 26 um, members at the moment, uh, 4 trillions of assets under management. So maybe there is more, you know, that could be done. And so I think I'd love to just go in on my second round now and, and hear a little bit, you know, what next? Think big. Again, this is something, this is the moment now we need to think big and think, you know, how can we accelerate ambition? And I'd like to, to go back to, to Christiana and, uh, and get her thoughts on your thoughts on, on you know, what, what can be done more? Where are some of the real levers uh, for ambition and acceleration? So over to you. Yeah, thanks, Barbara. Yeah, I think you we are hitting already a very um, important point, and that is about how to get through the billions to the trillions and to the catalyzing effect. And um, I think we should not underestimate how, my, how important it is, for example, what we discussed earlier when it comes to harmonizing standards and, and, uh, and frameworks, how important that is a sign as to the private sector, to put in, the private investor to put in money, because that makes... Um, that makes their investments more reliable, more uh, more transparent, and I think that is very important. And I think their public development banks can play a very decisive role that we kind of provide the framework and uh, the platform for that. And so that projects that we finance and the private sector finance with us together are really reliable projects with, of high quality. I think that is a very, very important and decisive role we can play. And honestly, there are one, two other points, I think, which we should not forget about. And um, we have been getting involved very much into policy-based lending over the last couple of years, yeah. because I think it always needs both. It needs a good regulatory framework. It needs uh, good political decisions. And there we can do, if we strengthen our forces, I think, can very much bring value to the table in our common discussions with governments. And I think that's something we can only achieve when we work together as, uh, as public development banks and not on a on a on a single single basis 
And in particular, when I look at all the challenges we are having ahead of us, it is climate and it is biodiversity as well. I mean, just yesterday at the climate conference, it was announced that uh, there is a plan or is a target in the next 30 years to kind of stop deforestation. So yeah. biodiversity, I think, is, uh, mm -hmm. is, a, is it will be get higher on the priority list and has to get higher on the priority list in the years to come. And I think there, again, all what we discussed now more in the climate-related uh, perspective uh, from policy-based lending to how to we get interest the private sector to to join us there about joint standards and 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 know-how and expertise will will get, get as important as important as it is now getting when we are talking mm -hmm. about climate related mm -hmm. issues and financing thank you thank you so much and again i think two very very important points both on building on what already has been achieved in terms of the the language the taxonomy but improving that and really I think having a standardized framework would just really help but then also pushing beyond what has been done going beyond climate and really going to the harder sectors to the harder IRS to really unlock uh, more uh, pools of capital but Gustavo over to you what, what is uh, the next frontier again again agreeing a hundred percent of Christiane and I have the benefit of being speaking after her we do think that our focus going forward as a club should be climate and biodiversity. There's no question about that. And when we speak about uh, new new frontiers and new new uh, perspectives of investments, we need to be innovative, innovative financial instruments. And uh, when you speak about climate and biodiversity, as important as mobilizing trillion of dollars is being effective at the last mile. And from our side, in our in our Brazilian perspective, we're convinced that the most efficient uh, instrument that you have to preserve climate and to spread out biodiversity is to through a carbon credit or payment for environmental services. So in our view, the, the next innovative agenda for the club should be on climate and the commodity of the climate is carbon credit or payment for environmental service. On this sense, uh, we are working on three, three, uh, three product lines on this topic from, from our standard. And uh, again, it would be great if you have a global uh, IDFC support on this one. The very first one, preparing projects, both for the public sector and for our private clients. Preparing projects on carbon credit, taxonomy, benefits, mitigation, trading is something new for everyone. So having a bank such as BNEDS supporting the clients has been very, very welcome. And as an example of what we've been doing here, we think you have today, we're managing today, we think, we're not sure, but we, 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 which can be the largest con concession of environmental assets in the world. Concession natural parks and forests for a uh, visit science scene and a sustainable wood uh, 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 exploration. Sorry, but there's a, a small noise here. The second front line is the quality assurance on the product. One of the main bottlenecks of those markets to spread out in Brazil, again, both payment for environmental service and carbon credit, is the credit reliance, is the assurance of the products. And we, using our own brand and our IDFC brand, we do think we can, we can do something transformational for emerging market uh, uh, projects, right? And the last one is, is capital deployment, is using our balance sheet in order to, to give our clients to show them that if they invest in the projects, there will be someone buying that at the last mile. We do see in Brazil a huge potential of offering carbon credits, but uh, everyone is afraid of investment because looking, uh, a backward looking was a bad mm -hmm. investment given that end of the day, they were not able to sell. So having a public mm -hmm. bank supporting the acquisition of this for the credit, something that is really uh, uh, unblocking the market. And uh, in our internal uh, uh, planning, we do intend to be uh, uh, auctioning acquisition of carbon credits starting next year. And so we can have, uh, we can give previsibility for the clients that from time to time will be there buying so they can invest and, uh, and, uh, and offer the market with carbon credit or PSA. So summarizing, preparing products, quality assurance of the credit and use, using our own balance sheet. We do think that uh, if IDFC, IDFC could look for on carbon credit on PSA, in our review, there is nothing more efficient than that in order to at least reach the last mile and have a positive climbing impact 
in complement of the, the, the instruments we have today. Fantastic. Thanks so much, Gustav. I think this is a, a great agenda already on what, what to do next. And certainly is something where, again, I think bringing 26 members together, you can learn a lot from each other together with the partners, of course. So thanks so much for that. And I think really kind of just like emphasizing again, like using uh, public money more effectively, but also coming up with innovative ways of, you know, going towards the areas that still don't have enough projects and not enough financial uh, instruments. But Javier, over to you. Mm -hmm. what, what's the next uh, frontier? What, what do you think that club should be doing more? So this, this is a very exciting time to be in finance. Mm -hmm. uh, two decades into the 21st century, three decades now. Uh, there's too many things that can be achieved that before were unthinkable. So let me start by saying technology. Nowadays, we are undergoing a technological revolution, and there are tools that enable us to reach regions, individuals, people who would otherwise have been left behind. Uh, we are particularly working in two of these initiatives, a B2B marketplace for microfinance institutions, with which we aim to add access and lower interest rates. And those are things that, again, if you go back 20 years in time, 30 years in time, we're unthinkable. Mm. Nowadays, the power of technology can enable us to do this. And I think the IDFC is at the, at the helm of advancing these initiatives through technology. Uh, my second contribution in this regard would be the power of finance to tackle inequality. Again, if you think of how unequal the planet can be in terms of poverty, regions that are still left behind. I think public finance is in a privileged position to actually forward an agenda in which we can help uh, correct these wrongs that have been around for too long. And finally, in, in that same vein, I would say that uh, gender inequality is still a huge problem. All across the globe, we see women being discriminated, we see interest rates that are charged uh, differentially for women, especially for women micro-entrepreneurs. And if you add the three elements, technology, public finance, especially through the pandemic, I think we all realized how public banks can actually do what we were meant to do. Mm. I, do I can't imagine any institution that didn't prove its counter-cyclical role. I think we all did. And, and that is something to be very proud of. So if you add technology, power of public finance, and the need to tackle gender inequality, I think we have a very, very powerful basis on which to build upon the IDFC's work. Fantastic, I think certainly a very powerful agenda going forward and I think very much needed again. I think what, what Patrick said at the beginning, it's the planet and the people. So I think what we've learned certainly also from the pandemic is just that we need to go beyond, we need to kind of you know, cross between and bridge between the, the climate action, but also like social uh, action to address inequalities uh, and use the power of capital with doing that. So I think uh, thanks so much for that. Javier, so it's now, you know, you have the, the nice, uh, you know, opportunity basically to just like <laughs> tell the IDFC all the things that you would like uh, to get addressed and, uh, you know, a, a wish list to the IDFC. Yeah. It's uh, it's a challenge though because being uh, being creative after after the intervention from uh, <laughs> from uh, three uh, prior panelists that makes it complicated. Um, I uh, may repeat a couple of them, but if I were to choose, uh, I would say also uh, innovation from the perspective of breakthrough climate technologies, and uh, and more specifically. And uh, the GCF will be uh, presenting, will be presenting to our board uh, a request for proposal, uh, precisely on uh, breakthrough climate technologies, but for in as accelerators and incubators. Uh, so we want to provide a window uh, through our great identities, where uh, those uh, startup phase uh, phase uh, innovation technology maybe early stage can find a way of uh, getting access uh, to uh, both grant as well as investment vehicles. So that's one of them. Uh, definitely on, uh, on in innovation of financial structures. Uh, I think uh, that's an excellent area where, where we can all play. And, uh, and more specifically where the GCF uh, can truly uh, support national development banks by providing a, a number of uh, de-risking instruments. Uh, so that's our role. Uh, let's not forget, uh, and we are very candid, 
Uh, the GCF's objective is not to get uh, the highest possible credit rating, mm. uh, but still for the national development banks, that's one area of priority because they go to capital markets and they need and they want to get the, high, the, the lowest possible uh, uh, cost of funds. That's not GCF's uh, mandate. Our mandate is to make sure that bank holdings, KFW inclusive and many others and uh, AFD, DBSA, that they can truly execute on their mandate by utilizing GCFs as a first type of guarantee or loss or anything of the like. So we have different roles and ours. It's truly to, uh, uh, to leverage on, uh, on our different risk appetites so, so that you guys can, uh, can deploy additional resources. Uh, and, and another element uh, when we talk about innovation, there's not only innovation on finance, on technology, it's also innovation on, on social aspects. Uh, that's, uh, that's why it's important to refer to a framework, a general framework could well be SDGs, it could also be called uh, ES, uh, ESG, but a framework is important that we all integrate in our, in our policies. Uh, thank you, Barbara. Thank you so much, Javier. And again, I think innovation clearly is one of the areas uh, that will be a focus for the IDFC, innovation in technologies, innovation in financial structures. And again, lots is going on uh, there. And uh, again, also in my organization, we have actually been working with many of you through this uh, innovation lab uh, that we are running and where we are hoping to provide also some some um, uh, pipeline of, of projects basically to, to all of you, but I think some we need much more, particularly in the harder areas, the harder sectors, the harder ge geographies, so certainly something. But I think, um, yeah, uh, it's kind of just like thinking outside of the box when you're trying to kind of scale up from what you've done now uh, to go into the next uh, phase. But we are now moving into our Q&A uh, section. Uh, so I'm supposed to uh, invite Remy back. I'm not sure whether I is I'm cannot on. see him. Uh -huh. That is good. I might just, um, Patrick, get you up because uh, I know it's always good to have you. And in any case, you're going to come for our concluding remarks. So if you want to just join us um, uh, there and then as we are going through the uh, Q&A, we can uh, draw on you as well. And we have Christiana and uh, Gustavo staying with us as well. But uh, let me maybe just like see whether there's any questions from the audience here. Um, any additions on uh, to the wish list of what the IDFC could be focusing on? Um, like just pausing here if there's any reflections. Do we have a, a micro? Well, we have that, the micro. Do we have someone? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, uh, Barbara, for giving me the floor first. I wish to acknowledge uh, your statements and the great work. I'm Her Royal Highness Princess Abze Jigma from Burkina Faso, and I do run an initiative which is called Mamalite Initiative for Sustainable Energy. And I, uh, <laughs> I know that my brother there has been supporting my ideas since, uh, since we start. And I really was uh, overwhelmed when you talk about gender and local initiative. That's where we would like to, to really walk the talk on that. We still don't do that. Uh, it's less, if I make the parallel, the, we hear about the billions, now the trillions. It's like, I'm an engineer in electricity, by the way. It's like that you have the big cable who's passing, and the little village under see the big cables, but he can't get e energy. So we need, you really need to build on also local initiative, local exp experts like we are doing with uh, local development banks and microfinancing. I knew that you touch upon the, uh, the rate is still not normal. As I used to say, we the women, we are triple A, but we do not benefit on the triple A rate. That's we need to work on this one. That's will, that will be my uh, addition. If we can work on that one, that will be great. Thank you very much. Thank and congratulations so much. again for your birthday. <laughs> uh -huh. Thank you so much for an excellent point. And we have yeah. Javier. Yes, so I would like just to react to that. I think, first of all, uh, what we have seen is that microfinance rates, microfinance micro rates are extremely high all over the world. And that needs to be addressed. Yeah. And then when you talk about women, it's even worse. Um, and bankers love to talk about billions and now trillions, which is good. But I think we should be talking about impact. 
which is one of the reasons why a lot of people over the world hate the industry because we talk about billions and profits and so forth, but we don't talk enough about how we can impact villages, women, and inequality. So that's part of the shift in focus and in mindset that a club like the IDFC can actually achieve. And, uh, and when we look at it in different countries, we do find differential rates for women micro-entrepreneurs, and those are credit lines that have 